first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to this really distinguished uh, uh, lecturers. Um, so I'm the next step in the row. I'm, I'm the end user uh, in this session because I'm the uh, clinical radiologist. And what uh, interests me is what I see. I, I don't say I don't care, but I care less with the background. I would like to have a result which I can give further to the clinicians who make the treatment. And they also uh, doesn't uh, have uh, too much uh, uh, time uh, to wait my uh, discussions why I uh, give my end di diagnosis or the end result, but they want to hear uh, a short uh, diagnosis. So this is a very interesting uh, discussion what's going on. And, um, I just shortly would like uh, to introduce what, what happens in uh, imaging uh, uh, diagnostics. So it's just a little bit more than 100 years that we have the ability to, to see anything from the structure of the body uh, with the help of the, of the X-rays. So as everything is going about morphology and, and uh, still today for bones and lung, it's a basic tool and it helps, but as you see, this is a scout view from CT uh, from the uh, soft tissues. We don't have uh, a good uh, resolution. So it's only shapes and shadows what we see. The next was the ultrasound, uh, what was a little bit uh, step, uh, a step uh, further, where we already uh, had the chance to, to see the tissues, so the structures. So that was not only a shape of a tumor, but we saw the tumor itself with its structure and its changes. And later on, with the uh, um, help of Doppler, uh, we are able to see the, the flow. It's also in the vessels, but also in the soft tissues, so the pathological structure, for example, in, in tumors. Another step was the, the computerized uh, tomography, so the CT, uh, which already uh, enables us to see a very good soft tissue contrast. And it's, it's only about uh, 40 years old, uh, uh, this, this method, this, this city, it was introduced in, in 1973, uh, and, but in the last, in the last uh, 20 years, it, uh, it also showed a very uh, fast develop, further development. So with CT, uh, still with morphology, uh, we see a very good spatial and a relative high tissue contrast and it's fast uh, and it enables us to use contrast materials where we see the dynamics, uh, for example, for tumor tissues, how, they, how the perfusion of, of, the, uh, of the tumor uh, is. Uh, another kind of uh, possibility is, is the nuclear medicine uh, in vivo where we see uh, a function. The resolution is, is not so good, but this is why uh, they combine it with CT or MR. Uh, and then we have a, a fusion uh, image where we have a CT background uh, for, uh, to see the morphology. And, uh, and then we have the, uh, the, nuclear, uh, so the nuclear medicine uh, uh, image where we see the, uh, the functional uh, parts. So MR, uh, MR is, uh, seems to be a perfect method for using all of this. Morphology, function, and MR is the only uh, imaging method where we have different tissue contrast. In, the, in ultrasound, everything is be, uh, belonging and everything is on the ground of the different reflection uh, late of, of tissues. In, in the Röntgen morphology, it's only the uh, absorption of the X-rays which help us to give uh, uh, an image. In MR, it's, it's, it's very different. So the basic sequences are the, the spin echo images. I don't go uh, through all of them. It's long and it's, and, it's, and it's just evolving just day by day. Uh, these were the basic images. This is a proton density images of the brain. This is a T2 image. And this is something, uh, some more sophisticated image. This is a fluid uh, weighted image, and this is a, a so-called um, 
image of of the of the of the of the of the uh, of the cholodocus of the intrahepatic uh, um, gall uh, veins and the ductus pancreaticus and it is without contrast material it's just native and it's just in some minutes so uh, what we are now, where we are now with uh, with our imaging model modalities mm -hmm. So from the beginning, where we had only the shades and the, and the shadows, now uh, the imaging methods are uh, the main diagnostic tools in the most important segments in the healthcare. So in oncology, traumatology, cardiovascular diseases. Uh, another important role is the possibility to measure the therapy response, should it be a, a drug or a surgical uh, management. We already uh, use several uh, decades uh, imaging methods for screening, for example, for breast and lung cancer screening. Another development is that uh, the traditional clinical pathological conferences where they compared uh, the results of, of uh, treatment or, or the evolution of some diseases which led to death uh, with the pathological finding. Now we more and more use the radiological correlation because we can do it in vivo, so it uh, still uh, has consequences. And sometimes it's more accurate and detailed because of the better resolution. In pathology, you can make only maybe one centimeter cuts in macro uh, pathology, I mean. In the uh, imaging, you can do uh, thin slices and in each direction, so it's the complete morphology what you see from an organ. And uh, these new modern imaging uh, methods give uh, something new for research and also for clinical practice. One of them is in CT. That's a CT image of the lung with lung window settings. This is, the, this is why the contrast is uh, so special. And uh, it's called the ground glass opacity. That means a partial filling uh, with fluid uh, uh, of the uh, alveoli, so this lung, uh, lung space, and this is this is this half shaded. So, for example, in in this uh, image, we see a, a cavitation of a tuberculosis uh, patient. We see some uh, uh, dystelectasy with uh, so it's an inflammation, and this is this uh, half shaded area. So, this ground glass uh, ar area. Uh, which is an important uh, to measure, so to see, uh, and this has any uh, therape uh, therapeutic um, uh, consequence because this is the only thing which is treatable in this patient. And this is what we didn't see before. And uh, it's not specific for, for uh, inflammatory diseases, but also for, uh, we see that in oncologic, in ar allergic uh, status or diseases, or in cardiac. So it's the old image what we have to see, but this is an important sign, which is absolutely new. MR gave us a lot of from this. One of them is the bone marrow uh, edema. And this is what we see. This is the fat suppressed image of the knee, and this bright area, this is where the, the con it was a contusion, and this is uh, uh, why it is edematous. And other type of this, when it's a, a stress, so micro traumas, this traumas uh, after micro traumas, we see an edema uh, in the bone marrow, and uh, this patient have to be uh, uh, without stress for a while, and it heals uh, spontaneously. And, uh, of course, what's the important con consequence of this, that, that these new entities, for example, marrow edema and also the ground glass opacity in CT, <laughs> give uh, new perspectives uh, for us and for clinicians uh, with, the, with the patient's management. And this is which help us, uh, for example, to uh, go further to the personalized medicine, which uh, is a, it's a, a basic uh, requirement uh, should be today. Unfortunately, it is still, we are still not at the point. 
So how good are we? We should say that we arrive to the paradise and we see everything and, and everything is perfect. Uh, but as we are going to more details, we see the, the limitations, our limitations. Our morphological uh, possibilities are very good. So with lesion detection, we see uh, many things in the images and in the human body. Uh, we, could, uh, we can measure the size, uh, structure, but mainly due to the contrast resolution, we have problems, for example, in pancreatic uh, tumors. A relatively uh, big tumor, for example, one or two centimeter in size, uh, will not be seen. Although we see a two millimeter uh, cancer in the lung, that's a question of contrast. And unfortunately, this is what happens. And also in the breast, this is in breast mammography, uh, maybe we uh, miss uh, one centimeter cancer and we see only an MRI. Uh, and the other problem is that sometimes we see too much, but we don't know what we see. For example, with lung nodules and liver nodules, when we see uh, under five millimeter lung nodules uh, in the lung, it's uh, impossible to say if they are malignant or benign. This is when we do these follow-up studies for uh, months or years, uh, uh, depending on the clinical uh, structure and in the, and the clinical background. So, and the other problem is when we can only rely on the size. For example, with lymph node uh, management, we, uh, we use uh, in thorax uh, over two centimeter criteria to call a lymph node a malignant. But it's an artificial uh, cutoff value. It's not, it's not natural and we have problems with them and so on. So what do we need? Higher resolution, faster imaging or more tissue contrast. And this is where, for example, the, the role of deuterium can come in because as we see the images, there are really some uh, limitations for us. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let me give you a, an example of how we look at the images. Uh, we look at the morphology, so the anatomy, uh, maybe with the function when we use nuclear medicine and also uh, a kind of biochemistry when we use uh, a spectroscopy in MR. Basically, we see the anatomy, the structural, structural changes, and we can detect uh, lesions in a normal anatomic uh, background. In MR, we are searching always the edema. This is the T2 or some kind of T2 images where we look for the bright spots. Uh, with the newer techniques, we can uh, measure the diffusion of water, which is a, a, in stroke patients, it's in a, is a, a key point. And we also have contrast materials uh, uh, in MR. So basically, we use T2 for region detection and edema detection, and uh, T1 for anatomy and for measuring the contrast uh, enhancement. Uh, but what do we see, and this is where we come to the previous uh, uh, talk, when uh, we don't know sometimes what we see in the image, because we are end users in, in, this, in this meaning. Of course, we know all these uh, anatomical details, these uh, pathological uh, details, uh, every details, but why this uh, area is brighter than this, we have ideas, but we don't know uh, maybe all uh, the background for that. So this is why I thought that in the Egeog, my idea would be that the difference comes only from the different uh, tissue or the different material. But I'm not sure, I'm not an expert of that. That's my idea only. And what's uh, interesting more, that sometimes we use artifacts for imaging. Uh, this is a knee, here is the, uh, the, um, the tibia, this is the femur, and this is a fracture, and this dark area, 
This is when we used the T2 star uh, sequence uh, first, and, and we didn't understand what this black area is there. I didn't know. When we have a fracture line, okay, we, we have the diagnosis, but when we only had this black area, what's that? And that's an artifact. That's a susceptibility artifact, and it's because of the blood. And now there is a sequence, and this is what we use in brain for detecting blood. It's just an artifact. So interesting things can uh, uh, come up, and this is what we have to uh, uh, analyze and, and think further when we want to use, for example, uh, uh, deuterium hydrogen ratio in image. What, uh, what is a great challenge, I think, because basically the deuterium does not give uh, any signal. So what, how should we measure the direct uh, effect? Maybe only through the ratio, but how to measure that? For indirect uh, measurement, measurement, I think there are two possibilities. One is what, what Laszlo already uh, uh, mentioned, this change in, in lattice uh, uh, change, and, uh, and then the question is how to measure with which, which sequence, or how do we notice that in the image? And another possibility is that uh, if we assume that different metabolites uh, uh, or uh, different uh, molecules are, are formed uh, through the deuterium effect, then maybe we can, we can find, find this kind of product or this kind of metabolite uh, as an uh, effect of, of the deuterium depletion treatment. And then we have to find that. These are some ideas where we can uh, go further, but how? Uh, as already more of uh, you said and mentioned, this is an absolutely an interdisciplinary uh, thing to, to do, and what uh, the radiologists can uh, help to that is this what I tried today, is to give uh, an idea how we work, how we analyze the images, and what are the questions, what we have, what are the things that we are sure we are maybe not using, but we, we see something on the image, but we, but we don't know why. And, and we don't have time, and it's not our profession uh, to look after, but it's absolutely a research uh, question. What, uh, what we uh, really need, and, and uh, because we are not experts in that, uh, MR technologists, and maybe the vendors, because a lot of technical things uh, in MR, uh, which, which we really can't deal with. Uh, another important issue is the critical use of the literature. The question of, of uh, um, using deuterium in uh, MR is from the origin of the uh, MR methodology is in the literature, but it's very uh, few about that. It's very few and not really good results. So basically nothing and some kind of uh, ideas which, which are really not uh, proved that they should uh, work. Um, and in practice, and I, as up to my knowledge and up to a uh, literature search in the last uh, weeks, I, so I didn't found any places uh, in the world where they use it in, in, in clinical uh, routine. And uh, one interesting uh, data that deuterium is registered as a, as a natural contrast material. Uh, and to close, uh, these were the questions, but uh, what we see on the image is the effect of uh, deuterium depleted water. Uh, this is an old uh, patient with a kidney tumor with multiple metastases in lung uh, in the solitary uh, bony metastasis. And uh, this patient uh, uh, was operated, so the, they made a nephrectomy. Uh, he uh, had become, uh, he had uh, got uh, uh, interferon treatment but uh, through the side effects, uh, they had to stop it, and uh, the patient has very uh, heavy sacral pains. And uh, then they stopped with all treatment, and uh, this patient uh, got then morphine. 
And this is how the sacrum uh, looked like in, uh, in, at, the, at this point. It was more than, so it's 15 years ago. This is a sacrum, and what you see here, this is a huge tumor mass. This is from the sagittal plane uh, exceeding the borders of, of the sacrum. And then uh, this patient got uh, deuterium depleted water therapy, and uh, in the next eight months, the general condition was much better. Morphine was not more used. Uh, the body weight was uh, in, the, in the good direction, and he could move along. And this is how the MR images uh, uh, looked like uh, eight months later. So this is the original with this huge tumor mass in sacrum, and this is how it's reduced. So the tumor mass is within the normal sacrum uh, contour. This is in the other, uh, so in the sagittal plane. This was the original one, this huge mass. And this is how it went back to the uh, normal uh, size of sacrum. Of course, uh, he didn't uh, heal because it's, it was an end stage uh, disease, but uh, this was a proved case uh, in my clinical practice where uh, the deuterium depleted water as a monotherapy uh, helped a lot uh, for the patients. Thank you very much for this. Uh.